when you see something, the, the visual that God gave me was that he's the omnipresent God. And being omnipresent, he can go into the past. He stays in the present and he's also in the future. He's in all these places in one go. Hallelujah. And that he goes to the past to sweep away the if onlys. You know, if only I had taken the right turn. If only I had done this at this time. If only I had studied this course. If only. He takes the if onlys and he cleans them out. He turns them around and he stands with you where you are and then walks ahead of you to the future so that he meets you at a place of success. Amen. And that is the, that's the kind of vision I kept seeing, that there is, no, there, there is no regret in Christ, hallelujah. He's able to go to the past and clean it up. So if there is anyone with any if-onlys today, I've come to let you know that the Lord indeed is your shepherd. He's the shepherd of yesterday, the shepherd of today, and the shepherd of tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that really is the message for today. The Lord is my shepherd. So let us turn to Psalm 23. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read it in two versions. And then I will we'll begin the discourse. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. I'm going to pause there, verse 3. You know, he says he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Other translation says he leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Hallelujah. You see, you are God's child. And because you are God's child, you bear his name. Yes? And because you bear his name, he cannot ask you to bring disgrace to his name. Praise the Lord. So that is why he leads you in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Because he, he says he values his name. His name is valuable above every other thing. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, let's see how the Passion Translation helps us. It says, the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. He, his tracks take me to an oasis of peace. The quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure. And leads me along his footpaths of righteousness. So that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness. Fear will never conquer me. Because you already have. Hallelujah. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll, I'll never be lonely for you are near. You become my delicious feast even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. And you give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, 
when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be with you forever. Hallelujah. I encourage us to read it in the Passion Translation again and again and again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Jesus is our shepherd because that is who he called himself. Praise the Lord. In John 10, 11, Jesus called himself the good shepherd. He says he has come to give us life. He says the enemy has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come to give you life and give you life to the full. He called us sheep. He says, I know who they are. I know my sheep. They hear my voice. They know who I am and they obey me. I am the good shepherd. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13 talks about the great shepherd. He says, through, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead. Hallelujah. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd. Hallelujah. He said that he will equip me with everything good for doing his will. I was expecting somebody to say, not only you, pastor, but me too. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we see that he, Jesus is the good shepherd. Hallelujah. But the scripture I would like us to read, I may mean, have plenty of scriptures planned, but because of time, I, I, I want to see, if, I know we started late, but I'll still like to see that we don't finish too late. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If we go to the book of First Peter, Chapter 5 and verse 1. I'm reading from the New International Version. It says, To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Hallelujah. Watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Don't be shepherds because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears... Hallelujah. You will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Hallelujah. When the chief shepherd, verse 4. So Jesus we see is our shepherd. And he's doing all these things for us. Hallelujah. He's leading us. He's directing us. He's providing for us. He's guiding us. He's restoring us. He's correcting us. He's protecting us. He's comforting us. He's celebrating us. He's rejoicing over us. He's celebrating our triumphs. Hallelujah. This is Jesus that we see. Hallelujah. But you see, when David penned this, he penned it from a personal experience, a personal walk with God. When he said, the Lord is my shepherd, you know, he could have gone, the Lord is the shepherd. I've read all other things. You know, he said, when the chief shepherd appears. Peter did not say when my chief shepherd appears, but we understand. But the truth is that when David was writing, he saw the Lord is my shepherd. He understands what a shepherd is. Because remember, when he was about to face Goliath and Saul thought, King Saul at that time thought he didn't have the strength to do it, that he was but a youth. He said, ah, 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 don't worry about that. I am not going in my strength. I am going in the power and in the name of my shepherd. I know this God intimately. I know him personally because when I'm keeping the sheep, of my father and a lion or a bear comes to take it I pursue them and I tear them apart and I rescue my sheep so when David was writing this he had first-hand knowledge 
of his shepherd. He knew that he was not carrying his name. Because remember, when he was about to face Goliath, and they were, the Philistines were taunting the Israelites, he said, what are you, you uncircumcised Philistine? I will show you today that you have not come against the armies of people, but you have come against the armies of the living God. Hallelujah. You see, the army of Israel, they were busy looking at themselves as the armies of Saul. But when David came, he said, "Uh uh-uh, you guys have got the wrong impression. You have named yourself wrongly. You have a mentality that has made you to fail because you have not looked up, but you have looked down at yourself. You need to look up and you need to see yourselves as the armies of the living God. And I come in, I come against you. You say you come against me with all this spear. You're wearing all this armor. You you know, look at me, look at you. But you know what? I come against you in the name of the God of the angel armies. And when he slung that, we know the story of Goliath. Praise the Lord. So when he wrote this, he knew what he was talking about. And when Jesus says, my sheep... He's not looking at us as dumb people. No, no, no. He's seen us as wise people who know what voice to listen for and people who are willing to follow the leading of that voice. Hallelujah. Say, Jesus is my chief shepherd. Say, Jesus is my chief shepherd. Hallelujah. Jesus is my chief shepherd. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what I want to do is to use the psalm to demonstrate how our God is in all of it. Hallelujah. That is all. That's the only expression of that. God is in all of it. Hallelujah. When you say he's my shepherd. And I, when we call on God... And when we say Jehovah, when we say we are calling him, I am. Praise the Lord. And what that means is that no matter where life meets you, he is. He is the solution, whatever it is. When you are in need, he becomes your Jehovah Jireh, the one that provides. So let us go through the psalm and let us see. How he is everything to us. Praise the Lord. So I'm going back to the um, New International Version. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm starting at the beginning. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. So this is where we call him Jehovah Rea. Our shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will lack nothing. He says he makes me lie down in green pastures. Hallelujah. I lack nothing. He's my what? Provider. He's what? Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Rea. Jehovah Jireh. I lack nothing. When he makes you lie down in green pastures. So even if there's turmoil around you. He becomes your Jehovah Shalom. Hallelujah. God, your peace. Hallelujah. He leads you beside quiet waters and he refresh, refreshes your soul. He becomes your Jehovah Rapha. The one that heals you. Not only your soul, but also your body. Praise the Lord. He guides you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He becomes your Jehovah Sidkenu. The Bible says that we have now become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He becomes our Jehovah Sidkenu. Praise the Lord. He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. He's your Jehovah Shama, the ever-present God that walks through it with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He says that you will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they are a source of constant comfort. Praise the Lord. He walks you through that. He becomes your Jehovah Ezra, 
That is God, your helper. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And he says that he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Is there a greater sign of victory and triumph than that? Where when all is said and done, you're sitting down. Not your enemies are sitting with you. And God prepares a feast before you. You are eating well and healthy. They can see you rejoicing in front of your enemies. What greater revenge is that? Hallelujah. He becomes your Jehovah Nissi. He becomes your victory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He anoints your head with oil. He becomes your Jehovah in Kadesh. Hallelujah. Your holiness, your sanctifier. First Corinthians 1 30 says that Jesus has become for us my wisdom. He has become for me my holiness. He has become for me my righteousness. Hallelujah. He becomes our Jehovah in Kadesh. He is our sanctifier. Praise the Lord. He says, our cup runs over. He becomes Jehovah manna. He becomes our portion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And at the end, he becomes Jehovah Shelech, the Lord, my inheritance. Praise the Lord. He says that, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. So with David, the psalmist, we also can truly say that he is our shepherd. So as we look through to the walk through December, I don't want us to walk through with feelings of, ah, I'm still here. What has happened? January. No, 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 we mustn't. Let the if onlys be buried in the love of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let the if onlys be swept away by the grace of God. Let those if onlys be swept away by the mercy of God because he is the omnipresent God and he's gone through to your past to see that all things will work together for you. Amen. He will make it beautiful in his time and you will finish well, you will finish strong. Praise the Lord. The truth of it is this, that truly instead of shame, God will give you a double portion of honor. He will give you a double portion of prosperity in your land. Hallelujah. And everlasting joy will be yours. Amen. So I just want to welcome us to December, our month of covenant joy. Still from Isaiah 61, 7. Hallelujah. Our month of covenant joy. Amen. Whatever it is that has happened in the past, whatever it is that makes you think if only, if only, if only, God says that his mercy, that he's the shepherd of not just today, he's the shepherd of yesterday and he's the shepherd of your future. That if only he would turn it around for good in Jesus' mighty name and everlasting joy will be your portion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just share the communion elements? Because I just want to say that for us to receive all this, we receive it in Christ. I look at us and I know that we are all children of God. And I know that in Christ Jesus, truly and surely, truly and surely, God is our chief shepherd. He is our shepherd. And we lack nothing. Praise the Lord. We lack nothing. The blood that Jesus shed enabled us to enter into this awesome relationship that sees that God completely surrounds us with himself. Praise the Lord. My vision is of us being completely and totally cocooned Hallelujah. In God's presence. His presence carries with it his mercy, 
his presence carries with it his grace. His presence carries with it his power. He is our Jehovah Sabaoth. He is the one that protects us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us that when we do this, we do it in remembrance of God. We do it in remembrance of him. That's what Jesus has said. And whenever you take this, take it in remembrance of me. And Paul, explaining this to the people of Corinthians, said that you proclaim this. You know, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And I have shared so many times that it is only in Christianity that we rejoice at somebody dying. We rejoice at Jesus' death. The horrible Friday becomes Good Friday because that was when we entered this wonderful relationship. So when he says you proclaim the Lord's death, you're just proclaiming what he has bought for you. You're proclaiming that he's Jehovah Jireh. You're proclaiming that he's Jehovah Rapha. You're proclaiming that he's Jehovah Sitkenu. You're proclaiming that he's your Jehovah Shama. You're proclaiming that he's, your, he's Jehovah Ezra. You're proclaiming that he is God the I Am. That in every situation, he's the I am. So at this moment in time, my need is different from your need. It might be similar, but it's different. You might be at that point where you're calling him Jehovah Jireh. I need you. You might be at that point when all you can say is that Jehovah Shama. Jesus, right now I need your peace. I need your presence. You might be calling him Jehovah Shalom. I just need a period of peace. You might need healing in your body. You might need healing in your mind. And right now, all you can hear is Jehovah Rapha. Whatever you're calling him today, whatever you're proclaiming him today, as we take the communion, that affirms to you that God is here and he will do it. As you take the blood, the bread that was broken for you, you know that it is a done deed because he had healed you. Hallelujah. He has already healed you. As you take the blood, you know that indeed he has completely redeemed you. Hallelujah. That there is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. Jehovah, we give you praise. We thank you for the bread. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blood. And as we eat this, Lord, we eat it affirming and proclaiming that he is Jehovah. He is Yahweh. Father, in the name of Jesus, let us take the communion. Amen.